Thank you so much for your clarity and tools yeah. and your life is supposed to be fun. <laughs> I love that the most. Yeah. So I have this little story. Um, I've been very successful and this year I decided to take some time and I've been accused as an overachiever <laughs> and I've done very well. However, this year I just let it go. Who would accuse you of being an overachiever? Um, Underachievers? That's a good, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yes. You know, I'd have angst about, about things and I was driven, kind of. Driven or called? Ah, I like that distinction. When you put things in your vortex and that synergy begins to happen and the cooperative components are being gathered and you are in a cooperative mode, you are called. That's and beautiful. others who watch you, obsessed with it, think mm. that you're being driven. And maybe you are from time to time, but mostly you're being called. Beautiful distinction. I... It makes all the difference in it the does. world. It does. It does. This year I decided to be more quiet. Something about 2018, I was just, I let go of any angst. It was, I thought that was beautiful, by the way. Thank you for that. And I have enough momentum going where I, I just let it all go. And the prosperity keeps coming in. Uh, I've been very quiet, a bit recluse. And I have a beautiful lake. I happen to live in Asheville and I, in the mountains and I walk down to this beautiful lake every day. I've been there for quite a while. And it's about two miles and it's just, it's just this amazing, beautiful nature walk that I do every day. And I, I sit on this bench at the very end of the lake and I, I'm quiet, I meditate, I look at the scenery out in front of me. It's quite extraordinary. One day a little bird landed on the railing and I was like, okay, this is interesting. And then it kind of fluttered around and I had the impulse to pick up a stick. And it landed on the stick. I was like, whoa. And then it flew around it and then... And the bird says, so much for being reclusive. <laughs> <laughs> I had the impulse to stick out my finger and it landed on my finger. And then... I was like, this bird wants to play. It landed on the cell phone in my hand. And I was, I was like, I can't take pictures of you when you're on my cell phone. In my hand. <laughs> so I, I got pictures of it and it was the most extraordinary feeling. I came back for a week and she just, I looked it up, it's a olive-sided fly catcher and it was a female, weighs about six grams. And I was like in a different dimension playing with this, little bird well those are the operative words I was tuned in tapped in turned on I was pure positive energy I offered no threat whatsoever I was in vibrational harmony with source and so was the bird and law of attraction brought us together to revel in the beauty of one another that's how it works I was at Asheville at a seminar with uh, my sweetheart at the time. And there was this young gentleman. He worked for NASCAR. He got up in the hot seat. He wanted a Porsche. <laughs> and you said, hey, it's in his vibration. He wanted a Ferrari, I think, as well. <laughs> he was a 27-year-old-ish, uh, beautiful black man. Uh, and we got to know him after the seminar. Went to lunch and things. And it, we kept in touch. And, and he even talked about working for me. Um, I was having a seminar at the Biltmore and other places like that. And up until the week before my seminar, uh, he was so excited and he, he didn't show up. And I thought, I said to her, my sweetheart, oh, wow, he's, he's not going to show. I, that's really too bad. And I never heard from him. Turns out his name was James Bowser and he had died. Is that how he got his Porsche? <laughs> he took the fast ride. Yeah. Is he? He's here now. That's the nice thing about all us dead guys. I That's love that. the most significant thing to know about those who've made their transition. They're still eager and interested and living and loving life and eager to play with you. Mm. It's especially nice if you have some point of interest that you can focus upon. 
composers flow through musicians, and magnificent master painters flow through artists, genius men of math and physics and science flow through scientists. In other words, so much insights come to those who are physically focused from those who've gone before. But not because as humans, you need that past information. It's just a sort of jump start sometimes to the new that will then come. There's a constant and eternal collaboration between what's physical and non-physical. And humans are on the leading edge of all of that. So when you're open, when you understand that there is no closed door other than a door that you close, that it's always open from the other side, when you are in that open frame of mind and expecting to receive, but you got to be in the receiving mode for that. In other words, in the same way that that bird came and demonstrated your openness, that bird was not demonstrating its openness. That bird was demonstrating to you your openness. And it's that sort of openness that gives you access to receiving impulses and thoughts. You see, non-physical, oh, well, we'll speak specifically of your inner being. Your inner being knows right where you are in your physical environment, in your physical creation. Knows right where you are in relationship to all that you are still asking for that is in the vortex, all that is in the vibrational version of becoming that has not yet manifested where you can see it. So your inner being knows how to guide you. And these are the most important words through your path of least resistance. We could say, and you might think it's more positive through your path of most allowance, but either way, through your path of least resistance. And we like to say through your path of least resistance, because we want it to be all right with you forevermore while you're physically focused to have some resistance. We want you to manage your resistance. We want you to understand your resistance. Some resistance is really helpful. Let's say that you really don't want something to happen. And when you think about it happening, it feels terrible to you. That means you are resistant to the well-being that you want. But let's say that you really want something to happen and you find yourself feeling some resistance and you recognize that that resistance is holding you back. In other words, you want resistance when you're moving in the direction of what you don't want. Don't you? If your car is headed down the hill into the bay, don't you want brakes? which caused some resistance. Resistance isn't a bad thing. You just want to be able to manage it. You just want to be in vibrational alignment with who you are mostly. Some resistance is helpful. Otherwise you'd all skid off the road. And everything that's true about the physics that you understand is true about everything that we're teaching too. So your inner being wants you to get accustomed to this life experience and accustomed to the way thoughts feel and accustomed to the way they feel as you are specifically thinking. And then before you know it, you'll have a handle on when to really let it go. If you're going hundred miles an hour and you hit a tree, it's a much greater problem than if you're going five miles an hour, but it's way more fun to go hundred miles an hour. So the key is to go hundred miles an hour with no resistance, but until you've got that down, go five miles an hour. And your inner being knows what your resistance level is and will never inspire you to go faster than your resistance will allow you to be well. How about that? Your inner being is not going to give you a great idea that you're not ready to handle. Your inner being knows right where you are. Isn't that magnificent guidance and expects your resistance to become less all the time and your expansion to become more all the time. You have this perfect co-creative partner. Yes. Now what? Please tell me that people, you know, the more connected like this and satisfied I get, I love that message today, that satisfaction. I feel so satisfied even right now. It's just so satisfying being here. People I love are sort of falling away and there's the resistance for me. I, I just letting it go. That's something that seems perplexing. Well, to here's me. the thing. You know how we talk about the universe at large or your world at large and how as you tune your frequency, you will attract. So it's this big clump of potential, but every person, you know, 
is also a big clump of potential. They have within their vibration things that harmonize with you and your source, things that harmonize with them and their source, and things that don't. So the more satisfied you become, and therefore the more in sync with this powerful co-creative energy of your source, then the more ability you will have to extract from them the harmony and to not notice what isn't. They don't have to change at all. You're doing all the changing. And so then you say to us, instead of people I love are falling away, you say things about people I love that I don't love so much are falling away. And the things about the people I love are coming closer and closer and closer to me because every person I know is a mixed bag and I can't control what the content of their bag is because there are many influences. But I, you say, I care about being satisfied. Therefore, I care about being under the influence of my inner being. Therefore, I care about this powerful attraction that is me. Therefore, I stand sort of invincible, not losing them. But you see, until you understand that, you might be one of many who has found things about them that are troublesome to you or that even feel threatening to you. Sometimes you say, oh, Abraham, I've been listening to you and I'm starting to get it, but those people at work are so negative. So you feel sort of protective of yourself, protective of your alignment. Yeah, I need to isolate myself more. I need to be in more seclusion. And we say, no, I just need to be more tuned to who you really are. And then you can be anywhere and extract or attract the very best parts of wherever you are. That's what being an uplifter is. It's someone who is chronically tuned to who you are, you know, one who's tuned in like that is more powerful than millions who aren't. The ratio, your point of attraction, when you are in collaboration, vibrational, harmonic collaboration with your inner being, your point of attraction is huge. Esther can't even find words in her vocabulary to define the difference, you see. When that's where you live, then that's what you get from this one and 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 this one, and this one or not. But fewer of them fall away because you don't let them fall away because you keep active within you the things about them that you want to keep attracting a woman said to us one day she was talking about her son she was worried about it and we gave her some words and we encouraged her to just sort of ignore what was going on with him as best she could and focus upon the things that weren't really happening but that she knew he wanted and that she wanted and she said he will feel like I have forsaken him if I'm not there for him in all of his troubles, he will feel like I've cut him free. And we said, not if you don't cut him free. How could anyone feel cut free when you are holding them as your object of attention and loving them as much as you love life? How could anyone feel cut free when you're making lists of their positive aspects and you are finding harmony with who they really are? How could anyone feel cut free when you and all of the resources of your inner being are focused upon them? in a way that uplifts them occasionally to their own inner being. It's only someone who's really lost, who is unreachable, you see, and there aren't that many really lost on this planet. Good? So satisfying. Thank you so oh, much. That's the operative word, isn't it? This is a really good time for a segment of refreshment. <laughs>